the Honorable Brinley Horatio Ben. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and honorable members. Mr. Chairman, again, I'd like to congratulate the Honorable Minister of Finance, Dr. Ashley Singh, in respect of preparing and presenting to this House a massive trillion dollar budget which sets a new bar for the provisioning of monies for the continuous development of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, the, this budget and the opportunity it presents was one which could only have been led on on, honorable minister, have been presented. On, honorable minister, I need to caution the Honorable Mahipal. You can go ahead. You want to deal with the Honorable Minister, please, you could go outside. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Go ahead. Mr. Speaker, the reason that Ashni Singh presented a budget on behalf of the PPPC government back again in power is because the APMU AFC was dismissed by the people of Guyana. The people of Guyana dispatched Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the PPPC in government is back here because of the trust of the Guyanese people, because the Guyanese people rejected the attempts to steal our, de our democracy, rejected their attempts to steal their votes, rejected their attempts. Minister, you have to withdraw the word steal. One time, two times. You can't impute. To take away, sorry, if I withdraw to take away inappropriately the vote on the mine and damage our constitution and had in full view of the international media online the naked attempts to take away the votes democracy of the Guyanese people and here it is again the descent into perhaps madness, which I've complained about before in this house, when we skirmish on questions of the development of the country. Mr. Speaker, one of the criticisms I've noted from the other side on the question of the budget, and even just now by the former Minister of Public Security, now my shadow, with the hope perhaps of getting back 
into the position in which I sit at the current time is that too much money is being spent on capital investment and not enough money is being spent on issues related to people directly. And just now, Mr. Ram Jutan spoke again something about a corrupt contractor class and a new caste being created in the country as a result of how monies are spent. But Mr. Speaker, coming from where we are, where we were, at the time we came in back into power, there was decrepit infrastructure all over Guyana. Physical infrastructure, energy infrastructure, infrastructure related to health, education, everything was decrepit. And also to, in relation to issues of public security that the Honorable Member, by convention of the House, spoke of. It is true, and it should be a simplism, a simple thing, that even if you give a person money and they can't get to the hospital, they can't get to the school, there's no energy, that there's no way that you can take the country forward. And so the investment in infrastructure is a sine qua non for our country's development here and now. In roads, in bridges, in energy infrastructure, it's a sine qua non that this is the priority. And the Honorable Member, by convention of the House, Ram Jatan, I don't want to use the word obnoxious, but perhaps it's more appropriate. But he's a lawyer, and lawyers are supposed to say anything without a, a conscience, perhaps. But Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member spoke about people not being given money or enough to do things. It was the Honorable Member, as part of the conjoint twin of the AP and UFC, who struck off and closed down its sugar estates? Who fired 7,000 sugar workers in this country, a sugar producing country? Who paid no attention to the 28,000 dependents that these sugar workers had? And he comes here and talks about we, we being the vanguard of the working class. The Honorable Member talk about a contractor, corrupt class or something or the other, but apparently these contractors is take the money, put 20% profit, and the rest of the money, nobody works maintaining the machines, working to dig the roads, doing the surveying, doing all the things which need to be done to develop the economy. They don't count, they don't pay taxes, that is what is implicit in what he's saying. Yes, yes, yes. Those people that don't matter. Those who make the machines, repair the roads, fix the roads, those who provide the services in relation to all of those issues, what is implicit in what he's saying is they don't matter. And the Honorable Member, the significant part of the conjoint train of the AP and UAFC, and you can't perhaps cut them off because they might both die. But the honorable member sat there in complicit with the APNU and allowed for workers in the bauxite industry being made to block the river at Kokoni, closing down the Russell investment, losing 700 workers at a thousand plus there, and another 300 down the river in the transshipment at New Amsterdam. Over 1,200 people lost their jobs and their dependents. They made the workers, some of them, complicit in their own misery and downfall. Those people have no work today. And the honorable member came here and 
expounds and espouses about vanguard of the working class and so on. Mr. Speaker, the man is now my shadow. And I don't know why he thinks that he perhaps will come back into the position. I don't know why we should have the travesty. And Metal Halsey wrote something, a historical novel, Shadows Move Among Them, about the Barbies River, about some man going there to set up a commune and trying to get away from authoritarian leadership. But there are all shadows moving amongst them. We must read Metal Halsey again, Frank. A lady, honorable to win this house. Makai has a particular word in relation to her. It's complicit in the removal of funds relating to gt &T. And the Financial Intelligence Unit and the SOKU have work to do in respect of that. But they come here without any feelings in the matter. Millions of dollars. They come here and plant themselves down, create distress and disruption, and then walk out. Mr. Speaker, I do not want to deal too much with the issues of all the lies, fraud, falsification, plagiarism, political depravity, which all of this shows here in this house, even in the absence of the AP and AFC. I will not go down the road of taking advantage of their absence too much, except for a few of them. The honored member who led off for us on the debate on the Abdul side, Mr. Roysdale Ford, said that the budget was uninspiring. Uninspiring. No talk about the volume of money which is there to critique, criticize, but to be placed to develop our country. But perhaps when he says it's uninspiring, it looks like he's looking at himself in the mirror as a lawyer too. But the questions we have, the issues we have, and the questions and the critique perhaps which was raised just now on the question of the meeting of the Public Security Committee, I got to take a few steps back. I remember when there were attempts being made to steal the vote of the Guyanese people, whichever way it went. There was a Minister of Public Security then, the first and only one we had. His name is on the board here, Honorable by Convention of the House Camerata Ramchatan. And there were calls being made when there were disruptions and bricks were being thrown on bottles outside the GCOM headquarters. I was then Commissioner GCOM. And I spoke with the police, leading person in the police, police inspectors and superintendents. People were assaulted, bricks were thrown at them, and I went out to get it to stop. Of course, those people were PPP supporters, PPP supporters. And they came to me terrified for me to get the police to give them support, to take them to a place of safety. And so I went to the police chiefs on the road then, pointed out the situation which they knew of, but they turned their backs on it. And you know what they told me? You're on your own. You're on your own. And so the brick box and bottles and bricks kept going, and we had to find ways to get ordinary Guyanese people to safety. And Mr. Ramadatan, honorable member, and I was never a member of the committee which he was speaking of before, expects me in all that we experience, to rush to have meetings with him on these issues. On the southeastern wrap of this building here, 
I had a physical struggle with the police who were trying to remove me, remove other comrades who were sitting here in this house. I was injured, still have niggling things. Tried to physically remove me and bump me down and lift me up and fetch me away as a commissioner of the Guyana Elections Commission. Only because I was sitting there to avoid them going into those boxes, those containers that evening, which they planned to do. I had to hold on to their legs and hold on to the rails. I called the General Secretary of the party in a moment, and Frank and Ms. Manik Chan came to my rescue and support. Yeah, you later on. So he, he wants me, when they have undermined the police forces, when they have confused the question of their loyalty, whether it's a constitution, country and people, or to a political party. He wants me to not pay attention to bringing back us from that malaise, that inattention, that corruption, that in lack of integrity, which those forces have had in their minutes over the years of their misrule. Should we really be speaking to them on these matters in the parliament, in a committee? Or shouldn't they be in the courts, facing the judiciary on these issues in relation to the attempted theft, sorry theft, take away for loining of our democracy? And coming here sanctimoniously, sanctimoniously speaking to the public, to Guyanese young people about their wonderful exploits here in this house and in service as ministers in this country. They had practically destroyed, subsumed, corrupted the discipline services. It's only when the army commander then, when challenged on the issue, said that he will uphold the constitution of Guyana. Brigadier Godfrey Bess, who deserves our commendation in this matter. The police could not be relied on. The rest could not be relied on. Many of them, if you look at their social media posts, even today you'll be shocked. No consideration for country, people, constitution, and democracy. And the market, anyway, Ramjitan, the honorable member, is gone. I have advised him before that if he's going to make a contribution outside, either by taking a hit or going to the washroom, he should not flush because he might disappear. <laughs> Mr. Speaker and honorable members, one day, the full and complete record of the disgrace that the AP and new AFC have brought this country and its constitution to will be clearly written and it will be helped along much by what is done in the courts and if not properly done in the Caribbean Court of Justice. I don't think we have to go to the ICJ for this. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak somehow on the challenges we have in our security sector, the total framing around the Guyana Police Force, the Guyana Prison Service, the Guyana Fire Service, the ministry's agencies, 
and the challenge we have, as we say, of increasing the peace in Guyana. Increasing the peace in Guyana. We cannot increase in Guyana with that group because they are not a reliable partner. They don't understand or want to understand constitutional democracy. They are, in other words, insurrectionists. Insurrectionists. Perhaps more of the Trumpian kind. And they had the TSU chasing out us from the center in, 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 in town there, in the Ashman building. The TSU came with their guns and their things and chased us out. And now they're suddenly a reliable partner. Now they love people. We'll get to the point somehow when they change some of the people they have. We'll get to the point somehow if they get a reset in respect of their way of thinking. We'll get to the point somehow when they actually respect other Guyanese people. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to go first to the questions of the Guyana Fire Service because it has some public interest at the moment. While we speak overall in respect of crime, for three years running, for the first time in decades, we reduced crime by 20%, serious crime, in 2022. Same in 2021 before that, and in 2023 by 17%. In Guyana, in spite of all the bad things you see happening, it is true that murders increase. It is true that we have an increase in domestic murders. It is true that we have disorderly murders, which are creating a great burden of the police force and the communities which they secure. But overall, crime continues to drop to decline under the PPPC in government. In our manifesto, we talked about less crime and safer communities. In respect of the Guyana Fire Service and coming out of the total issues of COVID, we have had great challenges. The great challenges relate to a larger number of fire calls, in 2022, we had 1,480 calls. In 2023, 4,181 calls. A 182% increase in calls relating to responses to fire. We have had, along with it, complete damages of buildings, businesses, motor cars, government properties, and so on, we have had the great sorrow of the tragic event at Madhya, where we lost 24 young people. And those young people come mainly from the most stressed part, quality of our Guyanese people, our indigenous community. In the review of the matter, President Mohammed Irfan Ali established a commission of inquiry, a presidential commission of inquiry into the May 20th, 20, 20, 2021, 23 fire. There were reports made in respect of the responsibilities of the various agencies who revolved around some responsibility in relation to the question of the fire. 
it is true that when Honorable Member Ramtatan was Minister of Public Security, he did receive a report which stated that the issues in relating to the dormitories in the interior had to be resolved. That Minister of Public Security who is now not here. Later on, there were reports to the Ministry of Education commissioned by the Honorable Priya Manik Chan in relation to the responses, in relation to investing in safer school buildings and investing in better dormitories. And I'm sorry Mr. Ramatan is not here because he was one of those who was caught in the budget, caught in the budget, caught in the budget when we were not in the previous government to cut down investment in health, education, public security. Yes, yes. That same fellow. Yes. But he knows when to escape. I want to say, not simply in defense of the Guyana Fire Service, cut and run, that the Guyana Fire Service, under the protocols established, haven't given the reports in respect of doing improvements in relation to fire service, fire safety, does not have the responsibility or did not have the responsibility to do those things themselves. It is incumbent on the house owner, of the owner of the building, of whoever is the agency which owns the building to put those things in place for follow-up inspections by the Ghana Fire Service. It is true that there were inadequacies in relation to one, a fire call which was a delayed fire call. The building was well alike by the time the fire service got there. And also, there was the question of them being able to break into the building even when they arrived. And there was questions of how best to treat with the children when they did rescue children from the building. And I want to say in spite of all of that happened, the Guyana Fire Service personnel rescued persons from the building, children. The event at Madia was for me personally one of the most difficult things. I landed at Madia at 3.30, I think, in the morning and went immediately to the hospital and to the scene of the fire, to the mortuary and saw the children and had work done to have them properly placed and set up so that it would not bring greater distress to ourselves. What we have done so far, the Guyana Fire Service itself, on request from the ministry, has gone to each and every dorm and school building in the interior particularly to put in smoke alarms, extinguishers, fireballs, sand buckets, and all other means, extinguishers, to prevent issues relating to fire. And they have also again done reviews and practices in relation to enhancing knowledge in relation to fires and the risks that it poses. One of the problems at Madia, and I've said somewhere else, that at the time, perhaps to some extent, even now, the environment is toxic and that we need to do more work to calm down some of these communities where people coming out with money, with gold, with diamonds, being a long way from their homes, uh, do not have the best behavior and prey on young girls in the communities. Mr. Speaker, I wish 
to say shortly in relation to the question of fire is that we have to continue to carry the message of greater fire awareness. We have to advise that once a fire starts in the building, given the nature of the materials of the building, if it's an old house now, and if you have a lot of blinds and sponge material in the house, within five to seven minutes maximum, the house is lost. And if you can't get out of that in, 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 in that period of time, you might be severely injured or you may die. And so the overall question of fire safety is a particularly important one for us. We are investing more and more in relation to fire protection. We are buying new vehicles, water carriers. We are buying a new fire boat in relation to the amount of work and the response there to being done on the harbor in Demerara and for other places. We are looking at putting in place new fire stations. We have just completed one at Wales and we anticipate looking at more fire station emplacements throughout the country. There's rehabilitation work going on at the fire station at West Remveld. There's work going on in relation to acquiring new fire units. We bought a new crash tender for the Ogle fire station, and we have also made a new building for that fire station. We are working with Angloco of the United Kingdom in relation to getting a complete new set of fire trucks along with the requisite spears because maintenance is indeed a problem. And I remember while we talk about that, that Minister Manikchan and I went to a fire just after we came to government the multilateral school. The fire service then brought out five mobile pumps. None of them worked. Not one of them worked. None of, that's what we inherited from Ramjitan. We had the fire around the corner from us near the courts where it was obvious that the firemen could not engage and go into the building to fight the fire because they did not have breathing apparatus to prevent themselves from collapsing so they stayed far away from the fires. It is apt to note that the feeling you had at the beginning was to use the Guyanese parlance that they were frightened. They were not well protected. And their own awareness of their safety was very low. We will reconstruct the Leonor Fire Station. We will reconstruct the Diamond Fire Station. We are making improvements to the fire station, Bartica, in terms of the way to get out of that area. And particularly, we want to applaud the work along with the Ministry of Health with the emergency medical technicians. People are not aware and people perhaps don't pay enough attention, but every day we get several calls for medical services, for the ambulance services, and that that service is doing a sterling job in, rela in relation to getting to persons who may have problems. In fact, they've delivered a number of babies, I think 40 or more last year. Uh, so on our PR side, we have to speak more about these things and the fact that they bring people to proper medical care 
after giving emergical medical care on site. Honorable Minister, you will need an extension of time to conclude. Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I'd like to ask that the Honourable Member be given five more minutes to conclude this very good presentation. Well, thank you, Minister. You have five minutes to conclude. Mr. Speaker, it's amazing how time flies at this podium. I, um, <laughs> I have a lot which I could say on the Guyana Police Force, on the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit, on our immigration services, on the GRO, all of the prison service too, all of those are given sterling service to Guyana. All of those units now are on the road to better improvement, better work ethic, better professionalism, better standards of delivery, better consciousness in relation to the work that they do. In relation to the issues of fire, maybe a more emotive issue is that I want to propose that we have in remembrance on the day of the magic fire at all fire stations and at the ministry, a fire victims awareness day where we have the pictures of the young people who died and where we will place flowers and also at the site of that tragic incident. I want to applaud the work of the Ghana Police Force. There is so much that we could do. It's unfortunately, Ramjitan isn't here, Honorable Member. He took over the CSSP. The Community Security Initiative was established under former PPP Minister of Home Affairs, Clement Rohi. Right here again, he comes brazenly, broad-facedly, taking something as his own, which he didn't start. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I want to pay some attention to the Guyana Prison Service on one particular issue. Or two issues. Firstly, an escape which occurred last year, a run through the jungle by persons who were involved in the killing of men, women, and children at Lusignan and Bartica, and which somehow they anticipated that we would have allowed for the escape, along with those who were supporting the escape. And some of those who helped the escape were prison officers who are facing the law now. But we brought the run through the jungle to an end. And I want to call on the prison service publicly again, maximum vigilance. We put in cameras, we are making new prison buildings and new prison schools and new women's prison a new vocational school, a new school for training of prisoners. We have talked about a fresh start program where we will train up prisoners to be useful when they leave the prison environment, where we give them the tools for a trade going forward. We can only increase the peace if we reduce recidivism and which, when we avoid those persons on going back out have to resort to crime and have no way of integrating back with their families or supporting themselves. And we see that as a great problem. The prison system has the obligation going forward to provide for itself 50% of the greens and vegetables and fruits that they produce. And we intend to help to pay the prisoners for the effort they put into raising those things, along with the chickens and the eggs and so on, which we, we want them to have and to eat. But extreme vigilance. Mr. Chairman, the Honorable Member Ramjatan escaped the 
area when we, we were talking about firearms. And a question was thrown at me recently in relation to firearms and amnesty. And if we look at the question today, if we look at the question in the papers today of what happened with the firearm that the young man who shot the girl dead and escaped to the Suriname, you see what happened where the firearm went along the way. If you have an illegal firearm, we will fine you. We will increase fines in relation to that. We will increase fines in relation to road deaths, in relation to issues related to bad traffic work. We believe if you have a firearm, turn it in. Don't set us up for us to pay for you to get money in relation to handing in a firearm, and then we don't know necessarily the lineage, what it was done with it, and we will give you money for it. Amnesty is for another time in relation to firearms, but read today's paper in relation to the question of illegal firearms. Mr. Speaker, I was prepared to talk a lot and specific, but as usual, the heckling presentations from the other side had to be responded to. Had to be responded to, and those, their responses are a priori in relation to our understanding of how we move to the position of increasing the peace and achieving the one Guyana that our President Irfan Ali so much desires. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable.